So I just recently got back from one month backpacking Africa and in today's video I will be sharing everything that I think you should bring, what I wish I brought myself and some things that you can just leave at home and aren't really necessary. So if you're planning a big trip like this make sure to keep watching because I have all the details for you. First up let's discuss everything you need for sleeping arrangements. Now I personally was doing a camping trip in southern Africa with Chi Adventures, watch the vlogs here if you want to see it. But yeah, we were sleeping in tents almost every single night, which meant that we had to bring our own sleeping bags. Now, before leaving, I was like, oh, should I bring like a regular sleeping bag? Because like it's winter in Africa, but like still it could be warm during the day. No, bring a warm sleeping bag. I brought this big sleeping bag and it was perfect for those cold nights in Africa because the temperatures drop drastically at night and it could be like minus four minus five some nights and i was very happy that i had this big bulky sleeping bag that is comfortable up to minus two degrees then if you're thinking about what kind of pillow you would bring i thought before that a travel pillow like this would have been enough and i was happy that i had this but i wish i had a big fluffy pillow like this and I actually ended up buying one in Africa myself. It was only like four bucks, so I thought it was perfect to spend some money on that. It's definitely not a necessity, but spending 28 days camping every single night and sleeping on a little pillow like this was just a little bit like iffy. If it was just like one or two weeks, this would have been fine, but after a while you start craving a real pillow. So I was happy that I bought something like this for four euros. Next up, I have some things again about the cold weather, but these are clothing items. So one of the things that I was really happy that I brought was a thermal t-shirt. So this is just one of those like long sleeve thermals that you can put underneath anything. And I slept in these most nights. And even when it was cold during the day or in the mornings, I would put this on underneath my outfit and be nice and toasty. And they don't take up that much space. So definitely bring one if you can and if you have the space for it because I use this quite a lot and I was very happy that I had a thermal top and I also brought thermal pants. These are from Decathlon and they were like four or six euros. They're amazing. I will try and link them in the description down below. But yeah, I just brought the black top and then I also brought the black leggings. Something I wish I had brought on my trip was gloves. Now, you don't need these kind of gloves. These were just the first ones that I found and I wanted to show you guys, but Taking your tents down in the morning when it's cold and dark outside, your hands get freezing. And it was on the itinerary list of G Adventures, but I was like, why would I need gloves? Like, I don't think I need them. It'll be maybe cold, but usually I don't wear gloves in the winter here in Belgium either, so I'll be fine. But had I brought these gloves, I would have been so happy at night because my hands were freezing and I was just... Sometimes we were waking up at 5.30, 6 a.m. to take our tents down. It was still dark outside and it was just freezing. Like unhooking everything from your tent and everything like that, it would just hurt your hands and I would have been really happy if I had some type of gloves with me. So again, if you have the space for it, I would definitely recommend bringing some gloves. Now, although it gets cold in Africa, one thing that I don't think you need is a raincoat because it didn't rain a single time on our trip in Africa. And I did bring a raincoat because, it, again, it was in the list and I thought it would be useful maybe, but it just didn't rain at all. It did get cold, so sometimes it was nice to have it as an extra layer, but I hardly ever took it out because it was like all the way in the bottom of my backpack and I most of the time forgot that I even had it because I just wasn't using it. And the only time that I took my raincoat out was to go to Victoria Falls and you could have just bought a poncho for three euros and saved the space of bringing like a big heavy raincoat and I just really didn't think it was necessary to bring so that was one thing that I would have left at home if I had the option to. Next up is day-to-day -day clothing so I definitely was happy that I packed a lot of neutrals. Bringing neutral colors like beiges, whites, blacks and browns is perfect when you're going on a trip to Africa. Now it's not just for aesthetics and having that like safari like look but there's a reason that most people that are doing safaris are wearing these colors and that is because it doesn't really disturb the animals. So whenever we were doing safaris or going on certain walks the locals were always telling us to wear neutral clothing because that wouldn't disrupt the animals and they were used to those kind of colors and you don't really stand out which is perfect for doing a safari. With that said I wish I'd brought like another long sleeve black top like I just showed you my thermal one and I'm really happy I had that one but I wish I had like a little bit more of a breezy one that I could wear during the day. So I didn't bring anything like that because I don't really own anything like that so I can't really show you what I mean but just like any long sleeve top that is a little bit 
breezy and airy so you could wear it like all day would be perfect for a trip like this and like I said any bright colors like purples or reds are something that you should avoid on bringing on a safari trip like this because again this disrupts the animals especially red I heard a lot that they didn't want you to wear so yeah I definitely don't recommend you bring too many of these bright colors like they're fun for other activities but if you're going on safaris a lot then bright colors aren't the go next up is evening outfits so i brought one dress on this trip and it was this like really pretty white and green dress from only i think no vera moda and i wore this dress like seven or eight times and i was so happy that i had this dress for like all the fun occasions and i actually wish i would have brought a second nice dress but maybe something that had longer sleeves um this was a long dress so it definitely kept me warm on the bottom but this didn't have like any sleeves so i just always wore my jacket with it but yeah i just wish i would have brought maybe something that had like short sleeves or even long sleeves because it just gets a little bit chilly at night and that would have been something that I really enjoyed having on this trip. On the other hand, I brought this nice button down so you could think like, oh, maybe this is perfect, but no. Like I just put this down for like 10 seconds even though I ironed it and you can already see that the pockets are getting wrinkly. So this was definitely something that I didn't enjoy having on my trip because I hardly ever wore it because it got so wrinkly. I folded this like nicely. I didn't like roll it or anything. Uh, but I tried both methods and this would just get immediately wrinkly and I just didn't enjoy wearing it like that so I hardly ever did. Maybe if I got in a different material it wouldn't have been as bad but yeah I just didn't enjoy wearing this one so it's a no for me. But now it can look cute in these outfits but if you don't have a steamer with you they're worthless. Now you definitely end up spending a lot of time in vehicles and having a little bit of entertainment on the road is perfect. So I downloaded some Netflix and I did so on my iPad but I wish I had done it on my iPhone because my iPad was just like super bulky and I hardly ever took it out and I thought it would be nice because that way I would save the battery on my phone but you could charge your phone in the Lando so that wasn't any issue. Um, so yeah, I wish I would have put it on my phone instead of my... Uh, iPad but yeah I was really happy that I had like a show downloaded and I could watch some episodes. One thing I wish I would have brought was a journal. A lot of people were journaling on the trip and I've never really been a journaler but I've seen this on so many trips and I keep saying I should buy a journal and never do but if you're like at least the slightest bit of a journaler then you should definitely bring a journal on this trip because you experience so many different things and sharing that and sharing those experiences is just something that is so nice to look back at when you're like in 10 years from now or when your kids are growing up and they want to see like what adventures you've been on. Now I know that a lot of people are also lovers of books and if you can read in a car then kudos to you because I just cannot do it like I cannot read a physical book without getting sick in a vehicle so for me personally I wish I wouldn't have brought my book now this is definitely a little bit more of a personal opinion and it can be different for different people but yeah a book was just not it for me uh, maybe I would have enjoyed having a kindle because for some reason I can do better on screens than I can do on a physical book so yeah maybe I would have liked to have a kindle there were some people who had audiobooks downloaded and I think that's also a really good option because having additional entertainment is definitely needed for those long drives. And then lastly let's talk about like photos and cameras and everything like that. So if you have a big DSLR I know it is kind of bulky but bring it on this trip especially if you're doing safaris or anything with wildlife. Having a DSLR is just such a different experience compared to just your iPhone like I know phones nowadays are like crazy quality and you can do so much with it but having a DSLR is just a little bit extra and I have a 300 millimeter zoom lens that I personally forgot bringing to Africa that I still like punch myself in the head for like how could I forget bringing my zoom lens this is like the perfect opportunity to use it but I was so focused on getting video and I was just thinking of that rather than thinking of like having zoom lenses. But I was so jealous of everybody that brought their zoom lens. So if you want to invest in something camera equipment for this trip, then I definitely would say a zoom lens is the way to go. I can recommend the Canon zoom lenses. I think I have the like 
75 to 300 millimeters. I'll put the exact one up here. I don't remember. Now, on the other hand, I don't recommend bringing anything like a Polaroid or disposable cameras. Like, they might be cute, but if you're backpacking for a long period of time, having these like disposable cameras that fill up and just take up so much space after only like taking 20 or 30 photos. They're just not really worth putting in your luggage so that is something that I would recommend leaving at home and taking on shorter trips with you rather than taking them and lugging them around for like a month. But yeah, that was everything that I think you should, shouldn't, and wish I brought on my trip to Africa. I hope this video was helpful in determining what you should and shouldn't pack. If you want to see exactly everything that I brought with me, make sure to watch this video next. And for the rest, you can watch my playlist on everything that I've done in Africa. I'm still uploading some of the videos, but most of them are live already in this playlist. And I will see you in the next video.